morning. How are you? Uh, I'm okay. You're Still a little tired, okay. but I'm good. There's no snow on the ground, which makes me happy because of our freak snowstorm. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the share and tell, show and tell. Yeah. And but why don't we do it both? Because then we might want to show something at some point. Well, so it's both share and show and tell. Share and show and share and show and tell. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. So my show, because I actually do have something I want to show, looks like a booger. Really? <laughs> and That's what you were telling me about. Before. Yes. So the reason I want to bring it up is I want to know if I'm okay. <laughs> so this is you know if you have by... to ask that question then you shouldn't have to, you know you know already know the answer you have to okay. ask the question and the right? comments could be really bad but elmer's elmer's rubber cement glue i don't know if you were a kid <clears throat> in school you took the elmer's rubber cement glue painted it on your desk and rolled it into balls as it got bigger and bigger and bigger and I remembered that recently, went and bought a whole pack of Elmer's glue, which is not cheap, by the way, for like three of them, it was like 20 bucks or something stupid expensive. And I made a rubber cement ball. And I'm proud of it. I just, I don't know if this is normal. Is this normal? No one, no one knows. That's why it's not I normal. Know. You go make this normal, please. <laughs> so, um, so. So my news is that my son, who's four, he is obsessed with catching frogs. Okay. So we go down to the pond, we have pond and the trail and we go down and we catch the frogs and we always say, put it back. So my, he was at my mother's house and he came home with a container with a toad in it. After all of the, let's put it back to nature. Grandma didn't know with, the rules. She didn't know the rule. Two weeks, this toad has been living in my home. Oh, you and actually still, kept it. You didn't take it and really. Ooh. No, I, I, I just, I didn't. So have I feel like there was a little plotting going on here. This was, <laughs> there was some, he knew exactly what he was doing. Grandma oh, oh gosh, gonna, yes. Grandma was going to mm -hmm. let him keep the toad. Yeah, we have tiny little ones over in our path area, Greenbelt, but I kind of want to, so I'll save it for another episode, but I have, I have this minor terrarium obsession and I wanted, I want to have a terrarium big enough to put a little frog in. Well, he would be perfect because he is just little. He's like, oh, okay. Cute. Good, good, good. Well, now if oh. you say it's cute, now you really have to keep it forever. What are we going to talk about today? Friend. Bring out the wheel. Da, da, da. Bring out the wheel. Do, do, do. Okay, let's let's see if we right. can get a better spin. Here we go. It's really hard to. I'm going to have to get. <laughs> I just don't want to be in it for some reason. <laughs> it feels weird being in. Okay, because you have to smile the whole time it's spinning. That's why. creepy too. Ooh, high quality spin. Ice quality spin my face. Why all the texture? Why? Okay. Yeah. That's a good one. It's a really good one. This could get intense. All right, tech terms. I mean the bottom line is they're annoying. And it's, I know this, this is not true for, I mean, it's true for every industry, right? You, you abbreviate out of, well, it's not just tech terms. It's abbreviations of tech terms. I never thought about that. It's, it, it goes deeper. So one good example or two particularly interesting examples right now in the tech field are AI ops. Okay. Yeah. Wait. Look, you already, you already giggled. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, observability. So these two terms are annoying for two different reasons. I, I the observability. What's the what's the it's the O eleven, right? Yeah, Oli. Yeah. If you're if you're super cool, it's O eleven Y. Or if you're super cool, you say Oli. 
in conversation and then you've, mm -hmm. you've earned your badge. Okay. So I, they're, they're different because, and I think this is important to note, I've accepted observability. I think observability is a useful term and I'll, I'll explain what makes, in my opinion, a term useful. I have not accepted AI ops. And I think that that's one that uh, in particular <laughs> causes some, some judgment across the, the field of tech. But observability is it, the reason I've accepted the term, and this is how I judge all terms, is does it relate to an actual problem space? And is the problem space discrete enough and large enough to warrant its own term? So observability speaks to a very specific problem space, which is modern applications. It's mo monitoring modern applications is different, period. It's different. And it's different enough that we need to categorize it in a different way so that we can be talking about the same thing. Because ultimately, the terms have value when you're in conversation so that everybody's on the same page. AI ops is more of what I would call kind of fluffy coming out of left field. It's not that there isn't something there. There's actually a problem space. You could question the significance of the problem space. And there are technologies, but the technologies, what really gets me about AI ops is the technologies are rooted in machine learning and statistics. So we, what I don't like about it is it kind of gives this perception of fairy dust. And these are just, these are just two terms. You can come up with a whole bunch of terms. What I dislike about observability is how we abbreviate it because the term itself is new enough. And when you abbreviate it and mark it, you're even confusing people even more. And why, why would you want to do that? It's already inaccessible. Like we want people to get on board, not, not gloss over. And it gets annoying when you abbreviate. I use the abbreviation. I only use it internally when I know for sure the people I'm talking with are, are on the observability bandwagon because it makes it easier. And the reason it's O11Y is there's 11 characters between O and Y. Ain't that silly, but it's true for Kubernetes as well. That's another one. K8S. Oh, K8S. Right. The Kubernetes, which is not I'm really not. an industry term. I've heard that before. The Kubernetes, is that a thing? Yeah. Co ooh, Kubernetes. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Are you Kubernetes? Nobody use that. TM. I might want to use that sometime. TM. There are a lot of terms though. I mean, it, it's, it's, and it's overwhelming. And I think some of the frustration is overwhelming, but a good, a good healthy curmudgeon will just by default goff at every single term. Like that's just a healthy, healthy practice. I did the same for DevOps. It took me a while. When DevOps first became a term, I would be like, that's just ALM. It's a, which was application lifecycle management. So I argued a new term with another term. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of silly. And, and the abbreviated part too. I mean, after you've drawn all of these events, what do you, how do you feel about the terms? Uh, it takes me, it takes me a minute to know what the, what it is. Um, I find like if there's a speaker talking uh, that, they'll use both. So I just put it together. So I did not put O11Y together right away. I did an event in April and I was like, wasn't sure what that stood for, but then all of the talks were about observability. So I put that together. Um, AI, I don't know what the ops part of AI means, but I know what AI stands for. And yeah, so like the K8S, I think, like I said, a lot of people will use it they'll say one, they'll say Kubernetes, and then they'll say Kate, Kate S or they'll have a slide on it or something. So then I just kind of put it together, but yeah. So vendors are largely guilty of being the ones who come up with these terms. And I think that it's on the burden of them 
to think through how the term is going to be used. But but because a lot of these terms come out of the techie world, they don't really think that consumption of the terms, how you say and describe something matters. Right. And it's worth it's worth putting effort into understanding that versus just throwing it out there because you think it sounds cool and it's going to, it's going to streamline your conversations. Yeah. The, and this may be the same event because you recorded this event. I, I made a joke about it. Um, Oli in particular, and I um, posted that on Twitter and I got some, some negative feedback from those in the observability loop, um, which I I think was unfounded. I stand by what I say that the point of these terms, we we need to think about accessibility of the terminology. Otherwise you're never, you stand no chance at getting somebody on your side if they're already frustrated because the industry is throwing out a new term. Because most people's response is, we've been doing that for years, or that's that's just X. I did that too right. with DevOps. But you, if you want people to get on board, it needs to make sense. <laughs> and it doesn't make yeah. sense if you start doing weird-ass abbreviations. For me, I've always lived by the philosophy of using simple language. And this is like well before I even did... Um, what I'm doing now. So I think for me, you know, people that are highly educated like to use big words sometimes. And it kind of goes back to all the things that you just said about that accessibility. But I've been in a lot of situations where I just felt downright stupid because I didn't understand the words that the person was saying. So I've always sort of channeled that. Like, I don't want to make someone feel stupid because I'm using words that they may not understand. I am always like thinking either, you know, in my work now, but like I said before that, I'd be like, can I say this with a simpler word that that person's going to understand? Like before I got into this, I did like early childhood education. So it's like, you're always writing or speaking at like a low grade level so that most people are going to understand what it is. And I worked with a lot of people that um, like were marginalized in families and things. So like, I don't want to make someone feel uncomfortable because they don't know what I'm saying. How can you connect with people if you were making them feel yeah. like an idiot? Right. So in the physics world, and I absolutely agree. And I feel like this is an important trait for everybody. Maybe it was easier for me because I'm not necessarily a walking thesaurus. I don't, I don't think in complex words and I don't like complex words because I can't spell them. But the, the idea that it's not a badge, the terms you throw out there aren't a badge because most of these terms, especially in the tech field, when you break them down, they do become stupid obvious. So it's not a badge you get to wear. And I spend a lot of time working with industry people, salespeople, people outside of the industry where they need to understand this stuff and, and they, they shouldn't be alienated. They could, it, it just helps everybody by being more simple with this stuff. I understand you have to name it. Like, and there's only a limited number of words out there to use, but it's it's important to help educate when you identify that somebody is not familiar with it. I have to catch myself all the time when I'm talking and, and using abbreviation and and remember that there's probably somebody somewhere listening to this who just, like you said, kind of glossed over it. And in the physics world, in particular, I feel like it is used as a badge. If you don't understand it, then you're not allowed to understand it. But Richard Feynman, my most favorite physicist out there, he he wasn't okay with that. He was really good at telling stories. So he would define stuff by telling stories. And you can find some of his older lectures on YouTube, and they're amazing, like how he explains fire and so forth. But he he doesn't think it's okay because in the world of physics, like we're not, if we really want to move the needle faster, we need more people to understand what we're talking about. 
And also, if you don't want people to misunderstand what you're talking about and start throwing out weird ass conspiracy theories like flat earthers, which are flurfs, by the way, if you didn't know. Really? <laughs> yeah, they have their own abbreviation now because there's a whole community. Of what is it? I need to know. It. I'm gonna put on a sticky note. What is it? Flat. Flurf. Flurf. Oh. Flat. Flurf. I don't know how to spell it. Something like that. Not, not, no, F. <laughs> I think. Flur. Flur. You're making a point here that if you can't even spell the abbreviation, then maybe you shouldn't use it. <laughs> yeah, but still, it's fun to, <laughs> it's fun to label them. <laughs> On a sticky note. But anyways, like, if, if you don't want opposition to also don't want opposition, then make, make this shit accessible. Don't, don't lock people out. Let's see. How'd you do here? I'm working on it. A lot of words on this one, not a whole lot of drawings, but, um, do you like how I use an abbreviation? Eight, right. Abbreviation. I know. I was just going to say abbreviate, abbreviate. <laughs> Actually, it becomes a form of encryption if you do that enough. Mm -hmm. True. And why would you encrypt something to keep someone out? Ooh, we're on to something here. I'm just saying. <laughs> it is encryption. Yeah, well, it can be. It doesn't need to be, but it can be encryption. You lock people out. I think there's a comfort level that some people don't want to admit that that's exactly what they want to do. They want to be in the know and lock people out. That's an insecurity problem. So that's on you if you're doing that. Right. Right. Or, or maybe like some people, sure, maybe that's the case. And then some people, like, would you say, because this has become a habit, you just sort of fall into it and you don't, you don't think about it. Well, there is the, so, the, what is it called? The anchoring heuristic or the availability heuristic that you hear something enough, you think that everybody knows it. That is kind of, that's a huge assumption that you just have to throw away. I mean, if you want to be simple, you have to challenge that assumption constantly. Mm -hmm. And it, and it goes beyond terminology. It goes into documentation. Some of the, uh, I, I remember at school, one of the projects we had was like writing out instructions for something that seemed very basic and then right. picking it apart where it wasn't basic at all. You could misconstrue it very easily. So mm -hmm. it, that's a constant battle that everybody should challenge themselves with. Could anybody pick this up and understand it? Now, granted, you know, you're in, you're in tech. Like there's other assumptions that come along with, you know, you're not going to understand observability if you don't understand software development in general. So there's other things, and you, that's somewhat unavoidable. Is that a rainbow? Well, the overarching, like, takeaway, I feel, is, like, challenge, it right? Probably shouldn't, it probably shouldn't influence the... Uh, a black rainbow. The, the talent here. Oh, that was cold. A black rainbow? You're going real dark. Oh, well, black. It's black and it's as <laughs> that's a real, rainbow. That's real dark. <laughs> I just commented on what you said, dude. Didn't we talk about this being a really positive podcast? <laughs> yeah. Surprise. Like a negativity bell or a negativity jar. Yeah. I think it looks great. How do you feel about it? Got a flatter thing. I like that add value. Add value on the same page is is uh is the most like that's the first thing that jumps out to you. Is I see that and I think, yeah, that's that's the reason we have terminology. Even though they're annoying sometimes, that's why it exists because everybody needs to realize it exists for a reason. I mean, it is sometimes for vendors, it is a chance to try to own a new category. That's what they're doing, by the way. 
when they come up with new terms, trying to own a category. And there's a lot of terms that have died on the vine for that reason, because that's all it was. But eventually okay. when it gets beyond that, it does it, these terms add value. So you need to respect the fact that the terms that stick around, they stick around for a reason because I guarantee you, and I can name a few of them, the ones that sucked vanished. I've, I've seen plenty of them. The most recent was fleet ops. Watch in two years, fleet ops is going to be the thing. I'm going to be doing a session on, I'm going to be doing a session on fleet ops. Damn it. <laughs> it's not, it's not quite dead yet. Is that what you're saying? No, it's, I'm going to call that one dead. Are you like against like AI in general or just like AI ops? I'm against the term AI big time because AI, I like the term, but I like it in my movies. AI is a category of technologies. It's not one thing that you throw at a problem. I would argue that we're close, but we're not yet at the point where we have sentient creatures. They're all programmed in advance to do a specific job. They're not evolving on their own. Now, the area I studied very heavily, genetic algorithms, that's exactly what it was for. But I also don't like the term AI because it often gets applied to something very basic. So it's overcomplicating and mystifying something very basic, which it tends to be statistics 101. So if you know stats 101, in a lot of cases, you can do quote unquote AI because that's how it's implemented. I get it. And, and the thing that if you wanted to argue against me, where you could get me is that it does define a very specific problem space. The problem space is human time is expensive. You need to augment it. And there is repeatable tasks that you can automate and you can intelligently identify what those are. Um, do you think it's like, to me, it sounds like there's like a little bit of interpretation in there though, because it sounds like what you said around AI, it's like people's interpretation of what AI means. Well, yeah, because AI in movies is very fantastical. And that's not real, you mean? No, it's <laughs> it's very practical how, how we use quote unquote AI ops. It's a very practical thing. It's not, it's not fairy dust as I, as I call it. Okay. The, the thing that's most frustrating with me about this term is that you will catch me using it. <laughs> I, I, I almost don't have a choice. That's frustrating. But it, it's become common enough that it does describe a problem space. And honestly, I don't think it's going away. Observability, I have no problem embracing that at all. But AI ops, I will embrace it begrudgingly. But I did the same for DevOps. And now I'm like a DevOps cheerleader. Big fan, yeah. I think like we're kind of picking on those two right now. But I think like the interpretation aspect of it is so important to think about because it goes with everything that was said, right? If things are interpreted wrong, then you can confuse people. It's not accessible. It makes how it makes people feel like uh, miscommunication, right? Boil can boil down to that as well, right? So yeah, and yeah. I maybe that's the big missing thing is that it should be clear that whoever came up with these terms was deliberate and thoughtful because a lot of these terms just kind of fly by and somebody goes, "Whoa, that's great." Kubernetes is is it, <laughs> and then they that's it. It becomes it. They don't. They're not. They're not thoughtful about it.